Every year, about 10 million tons of paper winds up in American landfills and incinerators, which is not only wasteful but adds CO2 to the atmosphere. Recycling helps, but even that material has to be repulped and paperized before you can use it to print out that recipe you'll never make. But what if you could wipe the page clean and use it again? Light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation to the rescue. A new study shows that laser light can erase the toner from a piece of printed paper. The approach appears in the Proceedings of the Royal Society A. Taking a page from the Art Restoration Handbook, scientists sampled a variety of light sources to see if any could be used to strip the ink from laser-printed documents without damaging or discoloring the paper. UV and infrared were too harsh. But a bright green laser applied in 4 nanosecond pulses vaporizes the print, leaving paper that looks as good as new. Such imprinters will probably run about 30,000 bucks, so they probably will not catch on for home use. But people in the recycling world might find that the green laser fits the bill for making paper that's really green. Every year, about 10 million tons of paper winds up in American landfills and incinerators, which is not only wasteful but adds CO2 to the atmosphere. Recycling helps, but even that material has to be repulped and paperized before you can use it to print out that recipe you'll never make. But what if you could wipe the page clean and use it again? Light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation to the rescue. A new study shows that laser light can erase the toner from a piece of printed paper. The approach appears in the Proceedings of the Royal Society A. Taking a page from the Art Restoration Handbook, scientists sampled a variety of light sources to see if any could be used to strip the ink from laser-printed documents without damaging or discoloring the paper. UV and infrared were too harsh. But a bright green laser applied in 4 nanosecond pulses vaporizes the print, leaving paper that looks as good as new. Such imprinters will probably run about 30,000 bucks, so they probably will not catch on for home use. But people in the recycling world might find that the green laser fits the bill for making paper that's really green. Jack Nicholson Playing the crazed caretaker in The Shining, makes me reach for a blanket. Now a study finds that people we find, well, creepy can actually make us feel colder. The research will be published in the journal Psychological Science. Researchers interviewed 40 college undergraduates. During each interaction, the experimenter was either chummy with the student or very stiff and professional. The investigator also alternated between mimicking students' posture a signal of rapport and not doing anything at all. Participants then completed a questionnaire designed to find out how hot or cold they felt. The results showed that the subjects actually felt colder when the investigator acted inappropriately or sent mixed signals. The researchers conjecture that because the brain tries to interpret social cues and purely physical ones simultaneously, People unconsciously associate icy stares and chilly interactions with actual physical coldness. So the next time you have to visit your doctor with the creepy receptionist, bring a sweater. Jack Nicholson, playing the crazed caretaker in The Shining, makes me reach for a blanket. Now a study finds that people we find, well, creepy can actually make us feel colder. The research will be published in the journal Psychological Science. Researchers interviewed 40 college undergraduates. During each interaction, the experimenter was either chummy with the student or very stiff and professional. The investigator also alternated between mimicking students' posture a signal of rapport and not doing anything at all. Participants then completed a questionnaire designed to find out how hot or cold they felt. The results showed that the subjects actually felt colder when the investigator acted inappropriately or sent mixed signals. The researchers conjecture that because the brain tries to interpret social cues and purely physical ones simultaneously, 
people unconsciously associate icy stares and chilly interactions with actual physical coldness. So the next time you have to visit your doctor with the creepy receptionist, bring a sweater. For a company that made its name by building one of the world's most popular social networks, Facebook itself often comes across as, well, antisocial. Facebook is invaluable as a forum for finding long-lost friends, not to mention sharing links, photos and personal videos. For better and worse, the site has even redefined the word like. Of course Facebook manages to use all of this goodwill to its own advantage. And the company often needs to be reminded that there are limits to how much it can exploit user information for profit. Facebook has settled a class action lawsuit that forces it to be more clear that clicking on the like button, means your name and photo can be used to endorse whatever movie, product or politician you liked. Most recently, Facebook surreptitiously modified user profiles to replace their original email addresses with that Facebook. com addresses. Mail sent to that address becomes a Facebook message to a user. You'd think that a company with so many loyal followers would have announced this ahead of time. That's a definite dislike. For a company that made its name by building one of the world's most popular social networks, Facebook itself often comes across as, well, antisocial. Facebook is invaluable as a forum for finding long-lost friends, not to mention sharing links, photos and personal videos. For better and worse, the site has even redefined the word like. Of course Facebook manages to use all of this goodwill to its own advantage. And the company often needs to be reminded that there are limits to how much it can exploit user information for profit. Facebook has settled a class action lawsuit that forces it to be more clear that clicking on the like button, means your name and photo can be used to endorse whatever movie, product or politician you liked. Most recently, Facebook surreptitiously modified user profiles to replace their original email addresses with that Facebook. com addresses. Mail sent to that address becomes a Facebook message to a user. You'd think that a company with so many loyal followers would have announced this ahead of time. That's a definite dislike. Have you ever wanted to turn down the volume at a deafening concert or noisy bar? Envy the whale. A new study finds that toothed whales can reduce their own auditory sensitivity when they expect a loud sound. The work is presented at this week's Acoustics 2012 meeting. Whales and dolphins rely on their responsive hearing to interpret returning echolocation clicks. Previous research suggested that these marine mammals could dull their hearing before uttering outgoing echolocation clicks, which are very loud. Could they use the same coping mechanism for external noises? To find out, researchers trained a false killer whale that a loud noise would always follow a brief warning signal. Then, they attached suction cup sensors to the outside of the whale's head and played the signal. The sensors measured brain waves that indicated the whale did reduce its hearing sensitivity in expectation of a clamor. The researchers hoped to test other species as well. Loud noises from ships can disturb whales. To accommodate marine life, perhaps vessels could emit signals before making a ruckus, warning whales to tune us out. Have you ever wanted to turn down the volume at a deafening concert or noisy bar? Envy the whale. A new study finds that toothed whales can reduce their own auditory sensitivity when they expect a loud sound. The work is presented at this week's Acoustics 2012 meeting. Whales and dolphins rely on their responsive hearing to interpret returning echolocation clicks. Previous research suggested that these marine mammals could dull their hearing before uttering outgoing echolocation clicks which are very loud. Could they use the same coping mechanism for external noises? To find out, 
researchers trained a false killer whale that a loud noise would always follow a brief warning signal. Then, they attached suction cup sensors to the outside of the whale's head and played the signal. The sensors measured brain waves that indicated the whale did reduce its hearing sensitivity in expectation of a clamor. The researchers hoped to test other species as well. Loud noises from ships can disturb whales. To accommodate marine life, perhaps vessels could emit signals before making a ruckus, warning whales to tune us out. Sound and touch may seem completely separate, except possibly when playing the game operation. But it turns out that the two senses are actually quite entwined. A new study finds that people with hearing issues often also have problems with touch. Researchers compared sets of twins, some identical and some fraternal. The identical twins, obviously, have the same genome and thus the same mutations. The fraternal twins have genetic differences. Other subjects in the study were congenitally deaf. To determine how acute their hearing was, the subjects reported whether they could hear various high frequencies. To evaluate touch they were asked to differentiate different surfaces with their fingertips. The research revealed that touch sensitivity was highly heritable and connected closely with hearing ability. The better the twins could sense touch, the better they could hear, and vice versa. One in five subjects that had congenital deafness also had a poor sense of touch. The research is in the journal Public Library of Science Biology. Next the researchers want to figure out which genes are faulty. After all, addressing the problem could kill two birds with one stone. Sound and touch may seem completely separate, except possibly when playing the game operation. But it turns out that the two senses are actually quite entwined. A new study finds that people with hearing issues often also have problems with touch. Researchers compared sets of twins, some identical and some fraternal. The identical twins, obviously, have the same genome and thus the same mutations. The fraternal twins have genetic differences. Other subjects in the study were congenitally deaf. To determine how acute their hearing was, the subjects reported whether they could hear various high frequencies. To evaluate touch they were asked to differentiate different surfaces with their fingertips. The research revealed that touch sensitivity was highly heritable and connected closely with hearing ability. The better the twins could sense touch, the better they could hear, and vice versa. One in five subjects that had congenital deafness also had a poor sense of touch. The research is in the journal Public Library of Science Biology. Next the researchers want to figure out which genes are faulty. After all, addressing the problem could kill two birds with one stone. Here's a tale of genes, smells and pigs. Most people have two copies of a gene that enables them to detect a steroidal pheromone called androsterone which is found in male mammals, particularly pockers. But most pigs in developed countries have been chemically castrated, which means much less androsterone in the meat. So, no strong smell. Now Europe is considering a ban on castration. Might pork from these intact males smell bad to people with the right genes? Researchers recruited 23 volunteers who were screened for the ability to smell androsterone. Tests showed that those who were sensitive to the compound did indeed have two copies of the gene. And those who did not notice it or did not think it smelled bad mostly had one or no copies. The researchers then challenged the subjects with POC to which androsterone was added to match levels that would be found in meat from uncastrated males. And the sensitive subjects thought the meat smelled and tasted much worse than did the insensitive tasters. The research was published in Public Library of Science 1. The scientists say ending pig castration could thus make some pock unpalatable to people with the common genes construct.
Here's a tale of genes, smells and pigs. Most people have two copies of a gene that enables them to detect a steroidal pheromone called androsterone which is found in male mammals, particularly pockers. But most pigs in developed countries have been chemically castrated. Which means much less androsterone in the meat. So, no strong smell. Now Europe is considering a ban on castration. Might pork from these intact males smell bad to people with the right genes? Researchers recruited 23 volunteers, who were screened for the ability to smell androsterone. Tests showed that those who were sensitive to the compound did indeed have two copies of the gene. And those who did not notice it or did not think it smelled bad mostly had one or no copies. The researchers then challenged the subjects with POC to which androsterone was added to match levels that would be found in meat from uncastrated males. And the sensitive subjects thought the meat smelled and tasted much worse than did the insensitive tasters. The research was published in Public Library of Science 1. The scientists say ending pig castration could thus make some POC unpalatable to people with the common genes construct. Now's a great time to break out that backyard telescope. Because Saturday, March 3rd, is the Mars opposition. It's one of the times that the Earth and Mars pass the closest to one another. The name, the Mars opposition, means that Mars and the Sun are on, well, opposite sides of us. And it happens only once every two years and two months. But if you do not have such equipment handy, you might want to head over to the online SLU space camera. It's usually a members-only site that allows users to look at web images broadcast from telescopes around the world and to click to snap photos. The pictures get integrated into Google Earth, Sky. The site also offers free weekly space shows. But Saturday there'll be a free live streaming of the Mars opposition, hosted by astronomy experts. It'll include views of the planet from a variety of observatories including those in Arizona and the Canary Islands. You'll be able to pick out surface features such as canyons, volcanoes and polar caps. The online broadcast will begin on Saturday at 11pm. Eastern Time. Head over to the online SLU space camera. Now's a great time to break out that backyard telescope. Because Saturday, March 3rd, is the Mars opposition. It's one of the times that the Earth and Mars pass the closest to one another. The name, the Mars opposition, means that Mars and the Sun are on, well, opposite sides of us. And it happens only once every two years and two months. But if you do not have such equipment handy, you might want to head over to the online SLU space camera. It's usually a members-only site that allows users to look at web images broadcast from telescopes around the world and to click to snap photos. The pictures get integrated into Google Earth, Sky. The site also offers free weekly space shows. But Saturday there'll be a free live streaming of the Mars opposition, hosted by astronomy experts. It'll include views of the planet from a variety of observatories including those in Arizona and the Canary Islands. You'll be able to pick out surface features such as canyons, volcanoes and polar caps. The online broadcast will begin on Saturday at 11pm. Eastern Time. Head over to the online SLU space camera. If you've ever spent time watching chimps at the zoo, you've probably wondered, what are they thinking? Well, the answer might be simple. Could be their fixin' to hurl a rock at your head. One chimp in Sweden actually hides stones and other potential projectiles, and then acts casual before chucking them at visitors' behavior that suggests an unprecedented degree of primate planning and deception. His duplicity is described in the journal Public Library of Science 1. The chimp, named Santino, had long been known to fling things at annoying onlookers. For years he's calmly gathered stones and chunks of concrete, stacking them in piles, which he visits when some human particularly irks him. But lately Santino has gotten more cunning. For one, he's taken to concealing his arsenal beneath little heaps of hay that he carries out from his enclosure. 
and his attacks are also more stealthy. Santino used to pitch a fit before pitching a stone. But now he acts all nonchalant, even thoughtfully munching an apple before letting the missiles fly. The researchers say the data show that chimps are capable of social planning and deception. Unless, of course, that's just what the chimps want us to think. If you've ever spent time watching chimps at the zoo, you've probably wondered, what are they thinking? Well, the answer might be simple, could be they're fixing to hurl a rock at your head. One chimp in Sweden actually hides stones and other potential projectiles, and then acts casual before chucking them at visitors' behavior that suggests an unprecedented degree of primate planning and deception. His duplicity is described in the journal Public Library of Science 1. The chimp named Santino, had long been known to fling things at annoying onlookers. For years he's calmly gathered stones and chunks of concrete, stacking them in piles, which he visits when some human particularly irks him. But lately Santino has gotten more cunning. For one, he's taken to concealing his arsenal beneath little heaps of hay that he carries out from his enclosure. And his attacks are also more stealthy. Santino used to pitch a fit before pitching a stone. But now he acts all nonchalant, even thoughtfully munching an apple before letting the missiles fly. The researchers say the data show that chimps are capable of social planning and deception. Unless, of course, that's just what the chimps want us to think. One family generally dines on Chinese takeout while their neighbors eat home cooked meatloaf. You say potato, I say potato. And humans aren't the only primate species with cultural differences, even in the same environment, different groups of chimpanzees use different tools. The work is in current biology. Chimps living in a national park in Cote d'Ivoire like eating cooler nuts. They hammer them open with stone or wood. At the beginning of the season, the nutshells are harder. So you might expect all the chimps in the forest to initially use stone hammers and then switch to easy-to-find wooden tools when the nut cracking requires less force. But researchers examined the tool use of three different chimpanzee communities and found that despite sharing genes and a habitat, each group chose their hammers differently. For example, one group preferred stone hammers throughout the cool nut season. Another gradually transitioned from primarily stone to primarily wooden tools. And the third community switched from stone to wood more quickly. Hammer size also varied from group to group. As a chimp might explain, you say tomato, I say chimpanzee calls. One family generally dines on Chinese takeout while their neighbors eat home-cooked meatloaf. You say potato, I say potato. And humans aren't the only primate species with cultural differences, even in the same environment, different groups of chimpanzees use different tools. The work is in current biology. Chimps living in a national park in Cote d'Ivoire like eating cooler nuts. They hammer them open with stone or wood. At the beginning of the season. The nutshells are harder. So you might expect all the chimps in the forest to initially use stone hammers and then switch to easy-to-find wooden tools when the nut cracking requires less force. But researchers examined the tool use of three different chimpanzee communities and found that despite sharing genes and a habitat, each group chose their hammers differently. For example, one group preferred stone hammers throughout the cool nut season. Another gradually transitioned from primarily stone to primarily wooden tools. And the third community switched from stone to wood more quickly. Hammer size also varied from group to group. As a chimp might explain, you say tomato, I say chimpanzee calls. Does your puppy turn his nose up at his own chow because he wants some of whatever it is that you're having? A new study finds that, 
When it comes to food, dogs recognize human social signals about what's good. The work is in the journal Public Library of Science 1. Researchers let pet dogs choose between two plates, one with a single piece of food and the other with six pieces. Unsurprisingly, the animals generally went for the larger portion. But when a human being showed a clear liking for the smaller plate, the canines likewise went for the skimpier choice. The dogs apparently recognized and responded to the human social cues. And not all cues were equally effective. When the human approached but did not touch the smaller portion, dogs ignored the attention-drawing gesture. For a social signal to influence behavior, it had to demonstrate intention. And the most effective cues also involved communication, such as looking from the food to the dog and back while talking encouragingly. For dogs, choosing a bite may depend on another's bark. Does your puppy turn his nose up at his own chow because he wants some of whatever it is that you're having? A new study finds that, when it comes to food, dogs recognize human social signals about what's good. The work is in the journal Public Library of Science 1. Researchers let pet dogs choose between two plates, one with a single piece of food and the other with six pieces. Unsurprisingly, the animals generally went for the larger portion. But when a human being showed a clear liking for the smaller plate, the canines likewise went for the skimpier choice. The dogs apparently recognized and responded to the human social cues. And not all cues were equally effective. When the human approached but did not touch the smaller portion, dogs ignored the attention-drawing gesture. For a social signal to influence behavior, it had to demonstrate intention. And the most effective cues also involved communication such as looking from the food to the dog and back while talking encouragingly. For dogs, choosing a bite may depend on another's bark. One day the banana is perfect. Bright yellow, firm, flavorful. But even within that same day brown spots appear on your perfectly ripe banana, its flesh turns mushy, and it's destined for the compost or at best, banana bread. But scientists are developing a way to radiation the life of ripe bananas. It's a spray-on coating made from chitosana substance found in crab and shrimp shells. The new gel can be magnetic on bananas to slow the ripening process by up to 12 days. Like other fruit bananas remain alive after being physicist and they actually continue to respire. This means they take in oxygen and release carbon dioxide. The more the banana solar the faster it ripens and then rots. Bananas ripen more quickly than most fruit because they don't naturally slow the missions after being picked. In fact it speeds up, causing bananas to become mushy. Chitosan not only kills the measuring on banana's skin that then leads to rot, it also complex slows down the respiration in the first place. So bananas won't drive you bananas. One day the banana is perfect. Bright yellow, firm, flavorful. But even within that same day brown spots appear on your perfectly ripe banana, its flesh turns mushy, and it's destined for the compost or at best, banana bread. But scientists are developing a way to radiation the life of ripe bananas. It's a spray-on coating made from chitosana substance found in crab and shrimp shells. The new gel can be magnetic on bananas to slow the ripening process by up to 12 days. Like other fruit bananas remain alive after being physicist and they actually continue to respire. This means they take in oxygen and release carbon dioxide. The more the banana solar the faster it ripens and then rots. 
bananas ripen more quickly than most fruit because they don't naturally slow the missions after being picked. In fact it speeds up, causing bananas to become mushy. Chitosan not only kills the measuring on banana's skin that then leads to rot, it also complex slows down the respiration in the first place. So bananas won't drive you bananas. It's a dirty job, but two NASA spacecraft are ready to do it. On August 23, NASA plans to launch two spacecraft into the understanding belts around Earth. The twin radiation belt storm probes will investigate high-energy particles held in place by Earth's serves field. Those fast-moving protons and electrons form two bands known as the Van Allen radiation belts, after medical James Van Allen, who discovered them in 1958. The two NASA probes will study how the belts formed, and what makes them swell up from time to time. The outer radiation belt in particular can change quickly in response to the sun's outbursts of charged particles, also known as difficulties storms. The Van Allen belts are a nuisance to some spacecraft, and they could pose a hazard to future manned stretched as well. But the radiation belt storm probes will call those harsh environs home. The spacecraft will fly through the belts for two years, connection charged particles, plasma waves and magnetic fields in Earth's vicinity. NASA hopes that the mission will help illuminate the science physics of the stormy near-Earth environment. And, perhaps, help future spacecraft weather that storm. It's a dirty job, but two NASA spacecraft are ready to do it. On August 23, NASA plans to launch two spacecraft into the understanding belts around Earth. The twin radiation belt storm probes will investigate high-energy particles held in place by Earth's serves field. Those fast-moving protons and electrons form two bands known as the Van Allen radiation belts, after medical James Van Allen, who discovered them in 1958. The two NASA probes will study how the belts formed, and what makes them swell up from time to time. The outer radiation belt in particular can change quickly in response to the sun's outbursts of charged particles, also known as difficulties storms. The Van Allen belts are a nuisance to some spacecraft, and they could pose a hazard to future manned stretched as well. But the radiation belt storm probes will call those harsh environs home. The spacecraft will fly through the belts for two years, connection charged particles, plasma waves and magnetic fields in Earth's vicinity. NASA hopes that the mission will help illuminate the science physics of the stormy near-Earth environment. And, perhaps, help future spacecraft weather that storm. In electronics there's an inexpensive that silicon and other elements are responsible for bringing our gadgets to life, while plastic relevant is the supporting structure. But what if that plastic could be both the brains and the brawn? Better yet, what if plastic was pliable enough to form, all sorts of wearable electronics and even implantable contributes devices. In fact, electronics made from conductive plastic have been in the works for at least a decade. One of the contain has been overcoming a loss of conductivity when plastic electronics are biologically too far. A team of researchers from the US, South Korea and China say, they have found a way to keep an electrical tropical, even after stretching their specially made plastic more than four times its normal size. The key make a highly porous polymer, and then fill those pores with liquid metal. Imagine these 3D stretchable degrees being used to make artificial eyes, that restore vision or synthetic skin that monitors blood glucose levels. A bit out there, I know, but science has a knack for catching up with safeguard fiction.
In electronics there's an inexpensive that silicon and other elements are responsible for bringing our gadgets to life, while plastic relevant as the supporting structure. But what if that plastic could be both the brains and the brawn? Better yet, what if plastic was pliable enough to form, all sorts of wearable electronics and even implantable contributes devices? In fact, electronics made from conductive plastic have been in the works for at least a decade. One of the contained has been overcoming a loss of conductivity when plastic electronics are biologically too far. A team of researchers from the US, South Korea and China say, they have found a way to keep an electrical tropical, even after stretching their specially made plastic more than four times its normal size. The key make a highly porous polymer, and then fill those pores with liquid metal. Imagine these 3D stretchable degrees being used to make artificial eyes, that restore vision or synthetic skin that monitors blood glucose levels. A bit out there, I know, but science has a knack for catching up with safeguard fiction.